In 2024, BRICS Plus has significantly expanded its membership, including nations such as Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. This expansion enhances the bloc's economic and demographic influence on a global scale. Collectively, BRICS Plus now accounts for about 37.3% of the global GDP and represents 46.5% of the world's population. Before the inclusion of new members, the original BRICS countries had a combined GDP of $27.7 trillion, or 26% of the global GDP. With the new additions, this figure rises to approximately $30.8 trillion, pushing their share of the global GDP to around 29%. Moreover, in terms of purchasing power parity PPP, the expanded BRICS now accounts for over 36% of global GDP, surpassing the G7 share. This video delves into the contrasting approaches of the EU and BRICS, exploring how the EU's environmental and sustainability initiatives stack up against the economic ambitions of BRICS. We examine how these differing priorities are likely to shape the future of international economic cooperation and efforts towards global sustainability. The BRICS Plus economy in 2024 has seen a significant expansion, adding new members such as Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE, thus enhancing its global economic influence. Before the addition of new members, the BRICS countries had a combined GDP of $27.7 trillion, representing 26% of the global GDP. With the inclusion of the new members, this figure increases to approximately $30.8 trillion, elevating their share of global GDP to around 29%. Moreover, in terms of purchasing power parity PPP, the expanded BRICS now accounts for more than 36% of global GDP, surpassing the G7's share. In addition to GDP, BRICS Plus holds significant reserves of natural resources. With the inclusion of oil-rich countries like Saudi Arabia, Iran and the UAE, BRICS Plus now controls about 43% of the world's crude oil production and 32% of global natural gas output. This concentration of energy resources positions BRICS Plus as a pivotal player in global energy markets. The BRICS Plus bloc has significantly increased intra-group trade, with members heavily relying on each other for both imports and exports. This growth in internal trade is a key aspect of the bloc's economic strategy, aiming to strengthen economic ties and reduce dependency on Western economies. Trade among BRICS nations have outpaced trade with the G7 countries, showcasing the bloc's growing economic integration and mutual reliance. BRICS Plus is also positioning itself to develop an alternative energy trading system that could operate independently of Western financial systems. Specifically, BRICS Plus countries account for approximately 43% of global crude oil production and 32% of natural gas output. This concentration of energy resources within BRICS plus facilitates the creation of a parallel energy trading system. This system could allow transactions among BRICS plus economies outside the Western-led financial infrastructure, potentially insulating them from geopolitical risks and economic sanctions imposed by Western countries. The development of such an independent energy trading system not only enhances energy security for BRICS plus members, but also allows for greater control over energy prices and trade terms. By leveraging their collective energy resources, BRICS Plus aims to create a more resilient and self-sufficient economic bloc capable of influencing global energy markets and policies. Overall, the increased intra-group trade and the strategic positioning in the energy sector highlight BRICS Plus's efforts to build a robust economic alliance that can operate with greater autonomy from Western financial and economic systems. The expansion of BRICS Plus aims to provide a counterweight to Western economic dominance, offering developing nations a platform for greater influence in global institutions like the United Nations UN, and the World Trade Organization WTO. This is seen as a strategic move to reform global governance structures and amplify the voices of the Global South in international decision-making bodies. By expanding its membership, BRICS Plus strengthens its geopolitical clout and provides a forum where emerging markets can coordinate on global economic policies and development strategies. This expanded bloc now represents a larger portion of the world's population and economic output, 
enhancing its bargaining power in international forums and negotiations. Let's take a quick pause. Could you do us a favor? If you enjoy our content, please hit the like button. To help even more, leave your thoughts and feedback in the comments. Your engagement helps us grow. Thank you. Political and Economic Challenges The European Union's green transition, aiming to become the first climate-neutral continent by 2050, faces numerous political and economic challenges. These challenges include political resistance from member states and stakeholders, the necessity for significant investments in green technologies, and concerns over competitiveness amidst geopolitical tensions and dependencies on countries like China for critical materials and technologies. The EU's ambitious plans involve several major policy shifts. A key initiative is the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, or CBAM, designed to ensure that imported products are subject to the same carbon pricing as those produced within the EU. This measure aims to prevent carbon leakage and protect EU industries from unfair competition. Additionally, the EU has set stringent CO2 standards for vehicles, targeting zero emissions from new cars by 2035. This move is part of a broader strategy to decarbonize the transportation sector, which significantly contributes to greenhouse gas emissions. Substantial investments in renewable energy infrastructure and energy efficiency are also central to the EU's strategy. These investments are crucial for reducing reliance on fossil fuels and achieving the climate neutrality goal. However, the path to these objectives is fraught with obstacles, requiring navigation of complex political landscapes, mobilization of significant public and private investment, and ensuring a just transition that does not leave affected regions and sectors behind. BRICS Plus versus EU Agricultural Comparison The BRICS Plus nations collectively possess over 1 billion hectares of agricultural land. This vast expanse supports a wide range of crops and livestock, contributing significantly to the global food supply. For instance, Brazil is a top producer of soybeans, sugarcane, and coffee, leveraging its fertile land and favorable climate. Russia excels in wheat and barley production, while India is renowned for its diverse output, including rice, wheat, and pulses. China, with its extensive agricultural sector, leads in the production of rice, wheat, and corn. Livestock farming is also substantial, with Brazil dominating in beef and poultry production and China in pork. Technological advancements within BRICS plus vary significantly. China and Brazil have made notable strides in biotechnology and precision farming, enhancing productivity and sustainability. In contrast, India employs a mix of traditional and modern farming practices, with ongoing government initiatives aimed at improving irrigation and crop yields. Agriculture plays a crucial economic role in many BRICS plus countries. In India, it accounts for about 16% of GDP and employs around 50% of the workforce. Brazil's agri-food sector is pivotal, driven by strong export markets for soybeans, beef, and coffee. China is rapidly modernizing its agricultural sector to ensure food security, investing heavily in sustainability. The European Union boasts a robust and technologically advanced agricultural sector. The EU has approximately 173 million hectares of agricultural land, accounting for about 40% of its total land area. The region is known for its high productivity, driven by modern farming techniques and substantial subsidies through the Common Agricultural Policy CAP. Key crops include wheat, barley, maize, sugar beets, and potatoes, with the EU being the world's largest producer of wine and olive oil. Livestock farming is also significant, with the EU leading in dairy products and pork production globally. The EU utilizes advanced farming techniques, including precision agriculture, biotechnology, and sustainable practices. Investments in research and development focus on improving crop yields, pest resistance, and environmental sustainability. This technological edge contributes to the high productivity per hectare seen across EU farms. Economically, agriculture contributes around 1.3% to the EU's GDP, but the broader agri-food sector, encompassing food processing and distribution, is a significant part of the economy. The CAP provides financial support to EU farmers, ensuring income stability and promoting sustainable agricultural practices. Comparison When comparing the agricultural capacities of BRICS Plus and the EU, 
several key differences emerge. BRICS plus countries collectively have a larger agricultural land base and a broader variety of crop production compared to the EU. However, the EU achieves higher productivity per hectare due to its advanced farming techniques and significant subsidies. The EU leads in agricultural technology and sustainable practices, while BRICS plus countries are making strides in modernization, with varying levels of technology adoption. Agriculture is more critical to the economies of BRICS plus countries, particularly in India and Brazil, compared to the EU, where it is a smaller but highly efficient sector. Pause 3S. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching this video. We sincerely appreciate you joining us today. If our content resonated with you or sparked inspiration, please consider expressing your support by liking it and subscribing to stay connected with our community. Your support holds immense value for us. You can watch another video of our channel which is now on the screen.